Hello, thanks for joining me on Awakening with Russell Brand. Here on my side channel, I talk about the spiritual impact of current affairs. I talk about techniques for surviving, ways that we can feel better about the world we're living in. I talk extensively about the politics around the pandemic and the regulations elsewhere on my main channel. Here, I wanna talk about how it makes me feel and how it makes you feel and how we can feel better about it. With this new Omicron, is that how you say it? Omicron variant. Do you feel a little bit frustrated? I think it's important now that we start to look at our mental health and our physical health and what we can positively control. Whoever you are in the world, it's very difficult as an individual to confront regulatory power, to deal with obtuse medical ideas, if uh, that's what you feel like doing. What you can take responsibility for though, is your own well-being and the well-being of those closest to you. This is not to advocate for any particular opinion. This is to advocate for taking care of yourself. I believe personally that what's happened around the pandemic is that it has mobilized and metabolized metastasized a lot of existing cultural division and a lot of existing cultural and social fear into something rather more fearsome. When we are dealing with fear and anger, usually what's happened is primal systems within ourselves have been stirred, provoked, awoken. And I feel that whenever you're in a fear state, unless you're actually being attacked by an animal or a car is coming towards you, or, where, or if you're in anger, unless you're about to deal with an actual physical confrontation, those emotions are things that you need to process and observe, not things that you can dive straight into. Me, when I get combined with fear, I don't come up with good solutions to my problems. When I get combined with anger, I don't come up with good solutions to my problems. Fear is a kind of intelligence, so there is information in fear. Fear is a type of awareness. It's stimulating, enervating, it's useful, it's a tool. When it becomes neurosis, an endless pirouette of thoughts, an endless carousel of feelings, you're in trouble. Anger can be a great motivator to move into different situations, to confront things that you don't agree with. If you're not in a position to have those confrontations, if you don't think it will be advantageous to have confrontations, then the anger has to be processed differently. Why don't we try a little exercise together to help us deal with the anxiety, fear and anger that we may feel regardless of our politics, regardless of our beliefs. Because do you know what I feel? We need to learn how to communicate with one another better. We need to decide who we wanna be as individuals, as communities and as a collective. And if we don't do that, if we stay in the divisions, if we stay in the fear, I feel like we're not gonna create a very beautiful culture for the people coming up behind us. I feel we have an obligation to start looking at things differently, to start looking at what are the solutions gonna be for us as individuals, for us as a culture, for all of our various communities. Let's take a little moment now to engage with an aspect of ourselves that is transcendent of all temporal conditions and feelings such as fear and anxiety. I want you, if it's safe for you to do so, to close your eyes for a little minute, sit somewhere nicely where you won't be disturbed and bring your attention to your breath. Breath, of course, the centrifugal point of so much of the complexity around us in a respiratory pandemic. Breathe gently, unselfconsciously, and as you breathe in for three, and out for five, in for three, out for five. Observing this rhythm as I talk, recognize that the frustration you feel, the fear that you feel, the anger that you feel, has an anatomical component. Where in your body do you feel fear? Where in your body do you feel anger? As you continue to breathe, recognize the possibility of letting go of some of that anxiety. Recognize the possibility of releasing some anger. Imagine, it would have been impossible for the people living through the horrors of the Second World War to imagine that one day it would just be a historic event. This too will pass as all things must. Within each of us, there is a point of access to the atemporal, that which is beyond time. Through the breath, in for three, out for five. It's possible for you 
and for me to access a place of personal sovereignty, a place of personal power, where we can commune with something higher. If we nurture this point of attention within ourselves, all communication that we have and all of the relationships that we enjoy will flourish and grow and improve. As you continue to focus on the breath, we notice that thoughts come. It's inevitable for thoughts to come. We don't resist them. We observe them from that place where we inhale for three and exhale for five. Remaining focused on the inhalation, the exhalation, and the sound of my voice. If you are disturbed by an external sound, if you are disturbed by a thought, if you are disturbed by a feeling, note that all these phenomena take place within your awareness. That these things pass through your awareness. That what you were thinking two minutes ago is already a memory. But so much of our time is spent projecting, imagining potential future fears, remembering past concerns. And that from this point of attention within us, we can see our beliefs about ourselves, our beliefs about our future, gently moving further away. There is a place within you that is sovereign, atemporal, beyond the reach of the fear, agitation and anger of everyday life. And even the fear and anger prompted by global events, there is a place within us that is deeper and more powerful and more permanent than all transitory phenomena. Through the breath, access this point. Through the breath, observe our tendency to combine with fear and anger. Stay with the breath for a moment. Observe your thoughts and your feelings. Don't combine with them. Notice that in addition to your thoughts, your feelings, your awareness of external sounds, including my voice, there's something else in there with you, an awareness. And this awareness can be nurtured and can grow. And that if you spend some time cultivating this awareness, your ability to withstand events outside of you that are beyond your control will increase and that you will know peace. And from this place of peace, you need not only be subject to external events, for you can awaken agency, but there is no point in moving into action until we know peace within ourselves. When you're ready, open your eyes. And notice now, if you feel different. Of course the world has not significantly changed, but at the most fundamental level of reality, all social and cultural events are abstract fluctuations taking place on the superficial material level of reality, whilst at the great depths of reality, down among the quarks, in the outer reaches of the limitless cosmos, there is a deeper reality of which you are part, to which you are granted permanent access. Cultivate your connection to that. From this place, conduct your relationships with other people. From this place, conduct your self-talk more harmoniously, in a more nourishing, gentle and kind way. Treat yourself with kindness. Treat other people with kindness. Acknowledge and recognise your own fallibility and the fallibility of others. As I do, I recognise my own flaws, my own failings. 
I recognize that I don't need to be perfect, that I can never be perfect. I recognize too, though, that I have a connection to something unassailable and magnificent, and you have it also. Now, I'd like you to let me know how you felt about that meditation in the comments below. I'd like to let me know what else you'd like me to do and what kind of exercises you would like. Let me know if you'd be interested in attending a live event, a live meditation. If you're not a subscriber to my mailing list, subscribe to it now. If you want to come and see me live, I'm doing live events between January and May next year. I don't do guided meditations there, but I can if enough of you want me to. And it's really important to me that you subscribe to this channel. That if you want, you subscribe to my luminary thing. That you sign up to my mailing list. I do loads of funny stuff on my mailing list. I tell books I'm reading, all that stuff. And it's also really important to me that you stay calm and you stay free. Yes, we must be well informed, but it's very important we cultivate this inner connection. Thank you. Stay free.